Hi, this is Lesson Linear Algebra 1.5 Solution Sets of Linear Equations. So right now what we want to look at are homogeneous solutions. Homogeneous just means that we have this vector B where it's all zeros. So it's the zero vector and here's all B's equal to zero. That means that we are homogeneous and we want to solve this for a non-trivial solution. When we say non-trivial, well, the trivial solution is 0, 0, 0, 0. That means that I'm going to have zeros all the way across. 0 equals 0. Yeah, that works. I want to find the non-zero, uh, tr non-trivial solutions for this system. So what I want to do is put this into the augmented matrix. And notice that I have this vector here of all zeros. You can decide if you want to include that in the augmented matrix or not, but understand that if you don't include it, uh, it's, it's still there. But if I take any number times zero and add it to zero, I'm still going to get zeros. So that row, I'm sorry, that column will always stay the same. So I'll start by using the leftmost pivot. I already got a one there, so let's use that. And I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the two and eliminate the three. So the first step with that, I eliminated and got these two values as zero, which is what I wanted. But then I did end up with this third column here, I'm sorry, third row of 0024, which is the same as this second row. And so obviously I can cancel those off. And then I'm going to go to the second row and I'm going to go ahead and look for my next pivot. Well, that's going to be this two right here. So I already had the one as the first pivot and then the two is the second pivot, and then I can eliminate things that are above it and work with it that way. Now once I get it into reduced row echelon form, this is my final setup. Notice that where I have the pivots as compared to where the free variables occur. The free variables occur where I don't have a pivot. So that's gonna be in those two situations. And so for x1, yeah, I'm gonna be able to solve in terms of other variables for that. But then x2 is free and x4 are free. And then x3 I can solve in terms of other variables. So then here's my solution to what we have to this homogeneous system that we wanted to solve. Note, two pivots, two frees, two free variables. And then how many variables did I start off with total? And then there's total four variables. Okay, so the pivots, if you're not a pivot, then you're going to be free. There you go. And so that can help us later on when we start talking about rank and other things like that. And I want to show you something that hopefully we'll talk about a little bit later. But if I go back to this matrix right here and I look at column uh, one and column three, if you look at what numbers I'm going to get, this would just be the identity matrix, which would be the upper portion and I, at bottom row is all zeros, but it would be the upper portion of those two columns, and we'd get the identity matrix. Now the question is, is what happens? Why can I switch these columns around? Well, all I did was I switched where I placed X2 versus X3, that's all. So I can get this identity matrix. Now I want to look at the upper matrix that's left of other items. So I'm going to get 2, negative 2, and I'm going to get 0, 2. Now the question is, is how does that relate to this answer right here? And if you can relate those two, I think that you're going to help yourself out a little bit later. But you're just going to take the opposite of this matrix, and then that will help you get out the solutions of what I have down here. And one other point is that if you do reduce row echelon form, you are always going to get this identity matrix somehow. Now let's look at one thing, some couple of things that we're going to do. We're going to try to write these things as parametric vector equations. So it's going to be x in terms of some vector plus another vector, and you might have a constant multiple that's multiplied onto those to get as many solutions as you can. And then also note that when you get one free variable, your solution is going to be the equation of a line. In the previous example, example uh, number one that we had, we had two free variables, and when that happens, you're going to end up with a plane for your solution. 
Okay, then down here, whenever a solution set is described explicitly with vectors as in example one, we say that the solution is in parametric vector form. I don't know if I did that. Let's go look. So to write this in parametric vector form, what I do is I do my x, and this is a big bold x because that's a vector, which represents each one of these variables, x1, x2, x2, 3, x4. And so I just take my equations up here and put them into a matrix. So that's this right here. Now to get the matrix parametric, uh, parametric matrix form, then all I'm going to do is take out the free variables. variables. Notice that x2, everything in here is in x2 or x4. So I'm going to pull out of x2 and take all the multipliers there and the x4, all the multipliers there and put them into vectors. So this is parametric vector form that we're looking for. And so what I want to do is another example has the same exact body of our matrix except for then the augmented portion is going to be different. For example two, and let's compare these two. So why don't you try solving this one, example two, pause this and go ahead and do your augmented matrix and elimination process in order to figure out what x1, x2, x3, and x4 are. So here's what I get when I solve this. Thus my solution becomes this right here. Very similar to what we had before. Remember that the 10 stays the same sign because we're in the augmented matrix and the negative 3 stays the same sign because we're in the augmented matrix. Now this vector forming thing, let's try that again and see if we can write that. So I'm going to go with my bold x. That's going to be equal to my x1, x2, x3, and x4. And that's going to be equal to, well, I got this. And the only difference that I have is this 10 again and the negative 3. So I'm going to take those as constants. And so for x1, I'm going to have a 10. For x2, nope, nothing. And then x3, I'm going to have a negative 3. x4, nothing. So those are just my constants. And now I'm going to add in, well, what do I have? I have my x2, my free variable. And that's going to be multiplied by negative 2, 1, and then 0 and 0, because those are both in the x4. And then I got my x4. And that's a party for the x1, which would be a negative i got to do this right, 2. Yeah, that is a 2. It looked like a 3, but there it is. And then the x2 is free, but I don't have that for x4. And then this one has a negative 2, and this one has a 1. How does that compare to my homogeneous equation? If I look at the parametric vector form up here, I don't have the 0, 0, 0, 0 written. But yeah, this thing is like having a starting value of 0, 0, 0, because it's homogeneous. And then notice down here, I have the 10, 0, and negative 3. That's what happened when I solved the augmented matrix. Those are the constants that I ended up with. And so that means that these two vector forms, all they differ by is this constant that I end up when I solve my matrix, my augmented matrix. And so what we're doing is really kind of taking a plane, in this case, because I have two free variables, and I'm just going to shift the plane up or over, whatever, by this amount, this vector right here, as compared to my homogeneous solution there. So the homogeneous solution kind of gives us a base, and then if it has a b, a b vector that is different than all zeros, then all it's going to be is kind of a translation of that plane or that line if it was only one free variable. And so that's the kind of the ge geometry that's going on here. All right, so these are some of the things you need to know. You might have to brush up by reading a little bit in 1.5, but that's all I have for you today. All right, have a great day.